really like spooky stuff. And I really, really like watching scary video games. But there's a, like a big but and I cannot lie in there. But I cannot bring myself for the life of me to play them. Silent Hill, Outlast, same thing. Amnesia. I really hate it when there's stuff behind me chasing me. It really freaks me out. Like even when I watch and the chase segments start in amnesia i'm like oh god i got i have to physically restrain myself from fast forwarding it's so uncomfortable for me i like spooky stuff asterisk that doesn't involve me getting jump scared all the time or i just don't like games where you have to manage your ammo and stuff versus spooky scary enemies <laughs> Which leads me into... Hello, and welcome to another video of a game I really, really like. Until Dawn was released in 2015 by Supermassive Games. Until Dawn meets all of the requirements that I like about a horror game. You don't have to actively aim much, you don't have to manage ammo or resources. You just go through the game and try your best to keep these people alive. Oh my god, I can't believe you actually did this. <laughs> a little bit oh come on she deserves it it is not her fault that she has a huge crush on my hannah's been making the moves on him i'm just looking out for my girl and <sighs> just because he's class prez doesn't mean he belongs to everyone mike is my man i am i'm not anybody's man <laughs> whatever you say darling should start with a little, you know, making out and see where it goes from there. Oh, hell yeah. Oh my God. She's taking her shirt off. What? Oh my God. Matt, what are you doing here? Uh, Hannah. I'm sorry, Hannah. Hannah. Hey, Let's all get out of Just a stupid prank. Uh, Guys are jerks. You know that? Hannah! Hannah! What's going on? Where's my sister going? <sighs> it's fine. She just can't take a joke. It was just a prank, Han. What did you do? We just messed around, Beth. It wasn't serious. You jerks! Hannah! Hannah! So, should we go after her? No, I kind of think you're the last person she wants to see right now, Mike. One wintry night, Hannah and Beth Washington mysteriously disappear, never to be seen again after a prank gone wrong. Now their friends reunite one year later at the lodge where it all happened. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> because it seems like they're not alone. That's the crux of the story without spoiling too much. It very much plays like a movie. The gameplay is very simple. Playing a scary game depends on the power level, power feel of your character. Diablo is full of scary spooky stuff. Don't care because your character is just OPAF and just goes around two-shotting shit. I just hold down disintegrate. <laughs> disintegrate, go! In Amnesia or Outlast, all you can do is hide. And that is what makes it so much scarier to me. And in things like Silent Hill and Resident Evil, your character doesn't feel as OP. Until Dawn, even though there's 
lots of jump scares and it's a scary game because it feels more like a movie because everything you do every single scary encounter is a quick time event the agency of having to preserve your ammo and to aim look around the environment there's like an enemy around the corner or something that you have to shoot or it's gonna like kill you it just feels different and it feels a lot more chill if you really don't play games you can still play this game because everything is a quick time event for some segments you need to stand completely still and for that segment it has like the PlayStation controllers like motion control sensor and you can't put it on a table because it's gonna vibrate so you need to get used to those segments or you're gonna die. If you have a friend or a significant other or someone who doesn't really like to play video games then this game is kind of for them because it's not really it doesn't really play like a game it's more like a interactive movie so they can just sit down and watch and you get to make decisions together. In fact, I actually really, even though some people like to play horror games alone, so they feel like isolated and have that spooky loneliness, for some people playing in a group removes any scary factor from playing scary games. But these types of games, I actually prefer playing them in a group because I had a lot more fun playing the quarry with my friends, weighing in on the decisions and like doing little quips. Okay, why is he so sweaty? Like, is he sick? It's bothering me, like a lot. It's summer. They're at a summer camp. <laughs> there's no air conditioning. Oh. They can't even charge their phones because there's no electricity. Make sure they're all ready to go. For real this time. Yeah, come on, use your brain. I've never been to summer camp. Have you ever been outside? Wait, Wait, how did you then I had playing Until Dawn alone, but I still loved Until Dawn. It was great. I recommend watching Rasputin's video on what gaming is like for a non-gamer because it really is eye-opening. It's really fascinating to see how much of gaming is really instinct and handling the controller. You know, you load into a game and you already know how to move the camera. If there's a sprint button, you expect it to be X, Y, Z button. If there's an attack button, you expect it to be this button. You know, you just kind of feel it. Playing an action game is really more difficult for someone who has to keep feeling their way around a controller. Which is why I think Until Dawn does an excellent job of keeping it accessible. Because everything is a quick time event and even if you have to shoot something, there's a timer on it. So you don't have to instantly be ready to shoot something or where you can go immediately people are memeing in final fantasy 7 rebirth about the yellow paint has invaded but it's actually coded into us so well that it is memeable because we see yellow paint or white paint and we immediately know we can climb it or something and with until dawn i feel like the way the gameplay is designed being an interactive movie makes it a lot more accessible to the types of people who don't regularly play games. You don't need to know where to go. Even if you go into a fork and explore for more clues, you will still end up at the same point because the game is linear. So it's just a dead end and you go back, circle around a point, whatever it is you need to do. It is a linear game. You won't get lost. There is a sprint button, but it really just goes from casually walking to HAL speed walking. Hello, everybody. Or me speed walking through the hallway during school days. Because I got places to be, people. Move it! And even if you quickly need to react to things like shooting something, there's still time. The game gives you a gracious amount of time, a few seconds, to get the reticle into the right place and click the button. As long as you have a basic grasp of where the buttons are, you don't need like Elden Ring-like reflexes to play this game. The butterfly effect is a system that some decisions are really harmless. Others will literally kill people. Hmm, what kind of repercussions is this gonna have? I'm not talking about totems deliberately because I feel they're kind of spoilery. 
Hey, now remember, you were supposed to go to the trunk, and you were actually going everywhere except the trunk. Well, I, I'm looking for totems! Yeah, I know. Yeah. Totems! 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 The totems! And what I really like about playing Until Dawn, aside from the story and everything, it's just the characters. Like, once again, the characters make this game. Also, the texture. Supermassive is, like, really good with these textures. This game looks gorgeous. And the next game they're coming out with will probably make your PS5 explode. But yeah, there's Hayden Panettiere, Sam, the, like, kind of cheerleader, big sis of the group, Ashley, the kind of more shy girl, Chris, the nerd, Emily, the bitch, Jessica, I don't know, she's, like, the popular girl, Josh, the heart and soul, Matt, the jock, and Mike, the popular guy. Throughout the game, you get to see the viewpoint of each character and see their stats on the stat screen and also their relationship to other characters because it very much plays like one of those classic horror movies. And your only objective is to keep all of these people alive until dawn. The only thing you're gonna have to get used to is the fixed camera angles for some things, kind of like in the old Final Fantasy or in the old Resident Evil games. Some areas have a fixed camera angle and the characters kind of move like a little bit with a little bit tank control-ish. I there's nothing here. Cut. Go. Go. Where's the exit? Do this. The fuck? Oh god, I'm trapped! Save me! I... this way maybe? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Help! I'm trapped! Right. You're already lost. I No, I can't find the, the hallway. There it is. Jesus. There are jump scares in this. It is a horror game after all. But this doesn't bother me half as much as like something like Resident Evil or Amnesia or something. This just has a nice setting, a nice story, good characters. It's best experienced fresh when you have no idea which choices affect what. If you're trying to go for a specific ending or outcome or something, you need to play from a specific chapter all the way to the end or from the beginning all the way to the end because there is no safe scumming, you safe scummer. FYI, all of the deaths are pretty brutal. I can't really show any footage with the music because obviously it plays during intense scenes that will spoil some of the plot points. But if you listen to the music and you think to yourself, haven't I heard this before? You might have played a little game called... Tomb Raider Reboot. That's right, same guy, Jason Graves. There are some more chill soundtracks to the game that are really nice. I'm still waiting for Supermassive to make the next successor of Until Dawn that's like as good or better. The quarry was okay. I liked it. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't like eh. I only really like Dylan. Dylan and <laughs> Dylan's the goat. That sounded like a prank. That was awful. Did I do good? Was that swarm of bears? Yeah. Herd of bears. Yeah, I've heard of bears. <laughs> 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 I love him. I also really like Nick. You never really see the shy jock. Oh, that's so cute. He's so adorable. I like him. And of course, he's Australian, mate. Even if you end up after this video not wanting to play the game, I highly recommend watching Jesse Cox's Scary Game Squad series on this because it is probably the best let's play of this game you'll find on the YouTubes. It's so good. 
What there happened? Oh, blood Big Head's here still uh -oh. in the bathtub. As far as we know. Yeah. Dude, she's all pruny now at this point. Yeah, she's probably oh. like a, like a rain bird. All right, there is two paths to go down. There's the blood, though. The blood That's is blood right. on both, right? No. Dude, shout out to a simpler time in America when all of us were captivated by the California raisins. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> all right. Pause. What does that have to do with anything? He Williams. said, "What was that said, relation to?" He said she was pruny. I said like a raisin, and now <laughs> I just remember back in the day when everybody had the shirts for the raisinets. They were like, "No, the California raisins." Wait, what were the raisinets? The, okay. the raisinets are a delicious candy that's still made today. Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad. We, I'm so glad that we. If you haven't played Until Dawn yet, and you like spooky stuff as much as I do, give it a try! It's really good! And after that, the spiritual successor is The Quarry. It's not as good in my opinion, but it's not bad. And I cannot wait for the next installment. I'll probably post it when it comes out. I didn't do that with The Quarry or Until Dawn, because, I don't know. <laughs> Don't ask me. <laughs> yeah, my mind works in mysterious ways. Anyways, thank you for watching and sleep tight.